While this one didn't go exactly as planned, I love how it came out. Let's talk the creative process and let me show you how to stencil. Okay, I have an all over stencil that I'm going to be using and I want this to be very random. I don't wanna go all the way across with the texture. You definitely could. I just have in mind a little bit more random, some texture in some places, smooth finish in others. Um, so we're gonna be a, a little bit random with this here, which is nice because it's gonna be a bit easier. So I just got some painter's tape here and we're gonna tape it in place so it stays just where we want it. I've got my white Dixie Belle mud and just a plastic spatula here. And we're just gonna put some on. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I've just got a few spots going on here. That's just what I want. Like I say, I want this to be very random and scattered across here, which will make more sense when we get it all finished off. So here is the test. Let's see what it looks like when we are gonna pull this straight off. Here we go. Oh, that looks a little bit of a mess, but we are going to fix it up and make it look fantastic. So we're gonna keep going here, avoid the edge here that is wet, let this dry and set up, and then we'll have lots of fun texture. Now I might come in here with just a wet paper towel and clean up a couple of these spots that look really um, unrelated to the design. We'll do that now and then we'll move on to the next section. This looks a little crazy, but we've let it dry completely and now the plan is gonna come together. So I'm gonna repaint over top of this in the same color as our background. So this is just gonna be some more neutral texture. project so the paint is all dry and I've got to tell you my original plan with this was to uh, paint it all navy blue distress it back so you would see the white where these raised details are that we put on here and then to maybe take some wax or some dirt or something to kind of rub it in and tone it back a little bit. But I did it and I'm gonna show it to you here in a minute and I just don't like it. So we're kind of back to the creative process here. And this is just an example. It doesn't always go the way you think it will, but you gotta be flexible. And I actually really, really like this tone on tone look, which is I'm sure hard to see in the camera, but it looks really cool. It looks like embossed. Um, and it's all the same color, which I just like. So let me show you what it looks like here, distressed. Let me spin my workbench around. And you can see here, so this is what it looks like with a distressed white behind it, and then some black wax on top of it. And it looks very random, and it looks kind of like it's not supposed to be there, or it's scratched up. It's not giving the, um, the look of the design. So that's what I don't love. Um, so let's go back and finish up the front. What I'm gonna do here is um, add a little bit of wax just for some color and some definition. And then I'm gonna top coat the entire piece, not only to uh, protect it and give it some extra durability, but also to give it a sheen that's really even overall. And because this is water-based, we can do that. We can put a water-based top coat right over top of this, uh, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'll fix up that one side with some more paint, um, give this a layer of top coat, 
can be good to go. One thing to note, uh, because the mud is almost like spackle, you can very easily ding it up or distress it. So that's another reason to use top coat over this. This is just an old t-shirt. And I'm gonna use this to buff out some of the wax, kind of smooth it out, even it out a bit here. All right, there we go. I am gonna give this a few minutes to dry and then I will be back with the top coat and I'll show you how to do that on a darker piece. My favorite top coat to use over the Dixie Bell chalk paint is their clear coat in satin. Gives it just enough shine. Now, it is a little bit thick, so I added probably about a tablespoon of water and I'm just gonna stir it up really good to get it mixed up. And then I'll thin it out just a little bit and give us a little bit more workability. So I just like to do that and stir till it's nice and smooth. I wanna get, be sure to get enough on the brush. So I think one of the mistakes people commonly make is to not use enough. So I wanna be sure to use enough. Now keep in mind with any water-based top coat, it has a little bit of a milky appearance, but it will dry clear. So you can really see it quite obviously here, um, and that won't be the case anymore when it's dry. So. Now something else, once you get it on there, you like how it's evenly distributed, stop messing with it. Just let it settle, let it self-level, and do its job as it dries. All right, there we go. I am going to do the rest of it, just work a section at a time. I did the entire front. Um, now I'll work on the sides and the top. I will let this dry a good couple of hours before I get it inside and I will show you how it turns out. I'll see you in just a minute. Sometimes it just goes to show you, you gotta persevere and stick with it. And sometimes you come out with something even better than you expected. Just like this piece. I love the embossed look that it has and I think I couldn't get it anywhere else. So I'm really excited with that. Tell me in the comments below if you've ever had a piece that turned out completely different than you expected. I would love to hear about it. And check out this playlist here on how to paint furniture like a pro. We'll see you guys next time.